Don't forget, 30 seconds. Talk to the person next to you. Can you identify? What can you see? Talk to the person behind you. And um No trees, no trees. There are no trees. I'll lower, I'll lower the light a little bit so we can see the contrast a bit better. Okay, that was a lot of time. What can you see? Yes, you! What can you see? This blue thing, very good. Indeed, the blue thing. How would you call that blue pen? Good! Blue eyes, and that's in fact what it's called. Blue eyes. Awesome. Nice one. What else can we see? What can you see? Standard. Standard. What can you see? Snow. snow. Awesome. You've got to know that the white stuff is indeed snow. What else can you see? Two things. Yes, the cliffs. The cliffs, the mountains, yeah? Very good. So that, those are the mountains. And in fact, if I, I'm going to take you there right now. That place, that's that mountain over there. And this is where the base camp was uh, very close to the mountain. And it looks huge, it is huge, from where I was standing to reach the bottom of the mountain. Two hours hike. Two hours. You, you lose sense of how far things are because of the, um, of the ice. So I'll take you there to where the snow is as well. And this is that picture looking the other way. And looking at the mountain, up, so that mountain is that way. So this is another range of mountain. It took us a day and a half to cross this glacier. You know, it doesn't look very far, but you know, you've, it took us a day and a half with sleds just to cross the glacier. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so we crossed from there to there. So those are those mountains there. And blue ice. There you go. Nice one. And that's the blue ice. There is a, a rock that fell from a mountain, deep thawed to the ground as we froze after us. I thought it was quite cool. About this big, just flew off a man. Right, what else? On the others, what else can we see? What else can we see? Come on, we've got to see things that are not there. We are scientists. We've got to look beyond what we can see and put some nice special goggles. Who can see the wind in that picture? Can you see the wind? Top left. Where is the wind? Where? Here, here, or here? Look at that. Can you see that? Yeah. That's the snow. The snow mm. path. And there's no the wind. Everywhere you look, where there's blue ice, you can see the blue ice down there, you can see the wind tails of the mountains. So if it's blue ice, very windy. Very, very windy. And then I've got some videos to show you outside the tent how windy it actually gets. And of course, all these shadows here are crevasses. And the crevasses are a series of holes down on the ground. Uh, they've got to be really, really careful where you go. So we didn't really go there. Uh, and the wind tails. This is a picture of, it's not exactly their place, but it's a different place, and you can see the blue eyes here as well. In fact, in this picture, it, very, very few people actually have seen these hills for real, like live. We were one of the few people that actually managed to make it to this place, uh, which that place is not actually there, it's, it's uh, over here. So you can see there's a wind tail there as well. Uh, and shadows, very important to see shadows, because if you pitch your tent in the shade, the temperature drops inside minus 20 maybe. If you put it in the sun, it was about 15, 20 degrees inside the tent, even though outside it's minus 20, minus 30. Because the, our tents were red, and the, there's a big greenhouse effect inside the tent. And we were sleeping without our shirt on. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. So this is our tent, our red tent. We got stuck there for three days. Three days without moving. And we were only allowed out of the tent for one hour because it was so uh, windy and cold. It was minus 40 when we got stuck there. And uh, you can see there the wind tails forming around the tent. Very important to picture the tent. Uh, and we had, when we did move, we moved across this glacier here. It was about five hours here from here to there. And uh, the wind blows in one direction. So one side of your face is freezing, while the other is towards the sun, and it's boiling hot. And if you sweat a lot, you've got to stop and turn around and defrost the ice that freezes inside your clothing. All in the name of science. Huh? How cool is that? How cool is that? Oh, question time again. 
the only kind of no local species of ants. No local species of humans. No local species of owls. The only kind of no McDonald's. Ah? Huh? Huh? <laughs> or is it all of the above? Yeah, no McDonald's in there. Although I did hear something about they tried to place one in an American base. But anyway. So 18 months of preparation. A lot of psychological training we had to do um, to be able to withstand that. So this is uh, one of the uh, psychological trainings we had to do. We did a three-day weekend in the Peak District. It was two in the clock in the morning. I leave and knocked on our door. Everyone's sleeping. Get up, get up, get up. Everyone stands up. What's going on? What's going on? And then they get their PJs on, and then everyone's running down the stairs. Come on, come on, come on. And the person looks at you and says, you've got to go inside that dark room. Catch the dead animal. Bring it out in 30 seconds. Go. And you just and look, what's going on? And you just had to go. Uh, the point of the exercise was, can you obey orders straight away? Because if you're in Antarctica and your leader says stop, you don't stop, you can fall. We will climb you up a mountain. Sir, yes. I have a question. Yes. You said that you have to put your PJs. How would they open Because we were sleeping inside our sleeping bags. It was very cool. Oh, okay. All right. That's, that's a question. That's it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's, 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 pretty, it's common practice to sleep with no PJs inside your sleeping bag. Two facts. Two facts. Common practice. Especially in Antarctica, you're, you're going to be free. Um, so, so yeah, so we had to do that, which is quite quite interesting. Um, a lot of physical training and fundraising. This is my uh, foot with a large blister after our training in Norway. We spent a whole week cross-country skiing in Norway, and that was pretty intense as well. So you got to let's week do some rock climbing. And <laughs> uh, this is in Norway where we had to do some cross. It was actually colder in Norway than it was in Antarctica. Because it was winter when we went there, and so it was dark all the time. Um, like, you know, not all the time, but dark not most of the time. Because you know, minus 24, we were in. There's a good story about that as well, which I like telling. We were inside the tent cooking, and there was a leak in the stove. And then we were there, just now, it was early morning, like 5 o'clock, and everyone was inside the sleeping bag, cooking some food. And then this flame just went inside the, inside the, uh, the tent. And then the guy said, out, out, out. And I'm thinking, i got to get out of here. And I jumped out of the tent because I was on the door with my sleeping bag. No shirt on, mine 34. What's going on? What's going on? And then the guy just throws the, the, the uh, stove towards me. Like that, and I get hit by the stove and I almost caught on fire. It was a pretty intense experience during training. Thankfully, it didn't happen in Antarctica. But it's a good story. Um, it's true, true, true. It did happen. It did happen. And we did lots of fundraising as well. We needed to raise £18,000 to go. Uh, and, and that's just half the money to go to Antarctica for 20 minutes. Uh, the other half was paid by the charity. And so we have, this is our flight there. Uh, the plane that takes you to Antarctica. So if you don't like flying, you've got to go into a plane without any uh, coverings. A plane that has is a Russian uh, crew. Uh, it's a plane from the 70s, it's got a massive car inside, it's got a leather, it's got a wall clock, it's got wires hanging out, and it's got the sandwich, which was made by this guy here. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> there you go, five hours on a flight with that crew, uh, this uh, is the way you've got to face together. And this is the, uh, the plane on, from the outside. So, awesome. So, where do we go? Let me take you to Antarctica again. So, this is our track, that's what we did. So uh, you can see that we camped on near the blue ice. Not a very good idea. I'll take you there. So this is Union Glacier, and, and, and that's the base camp. Uh, the stretch of blue ice is about 10 kilometers in, in distance where the plane lands. So there, those mountains are about 12 kilometers away from where we are now. So you lose sense of distance. You've got to be really careful when you're in Antarctica in terms of distance. That's the blue ice runner. Let me take you there so you can have a sense of what it looks like. So that's the blue ice running with the wind. The plane lands in and lands out again. And the wind blows always down, always. Because the target is like an inverted bowl, the wind always flows south, away from the 
lake at the South Pole. Plane landing there and out on the same day can't stay there. Because otherwise the engines would freeze. So he stays in and the engines stay on and then collects people in or equipment and then flies back out again. So you can't stay in the town. Yes? Um, one question. What if you're delayed and you miss the flight back? How would you know when you, the plane is? You would, they, because they have people communicating in the mainland oh. telling them about the weather. There's a webcam that stays there permanently as well, which they placed. Uh, to look at the weather, there's a weather station as well. And uh, the Russian crew are very, very particular about going to Antarctica. They won't go unless the weather is perfect. If the wind is above, I don't know, 60 kilometers an hour, 50 kilometers an hour, they won't go in. So um, it's quite, quite intense. So if you're there and you need to go on the next flight, you just have to sit and wait. <laughs> when the flight comes, it comes and it takes it. Um, so those are, those are the uh, Nimbus Hills where we uh, also went to. It looks close as well, there's quite a bit of a track together with the snow. That we, that's where the uh, bottle got dropped. And that's where I did a lot of my UV measurements, I'll show you later on as well. And this is the Flanagan Glacier uh, where we got stuck, and that's now it's 40. But it wasn't just pain as well, we had a lot of fun. Uh, you know, you've got to go do science, but you have fun as well. So we used one of our tents as a kite. And uh, that's me in red. That's the uh, that's Lindsay, the chemistry teacher. And she wants to get it going. But she doesn't know much about physics. <laughs> so uh, her weight is not very well distributed in the, uh, in the sled. She's standing there and I'm telling you, you've got to sit down to distribute your weight, reduce the friction. And she goes, nah, I'm a chemist, I know. So, uh, for sure. Sorry. And uh, the surprise doesn't happen. The wind blows quite strongly. Right? You see, that's why we got stuck for three days. And then uh, I tell her to, uh, to sit down. And, uh, <laughs> you see how much I actually ran? You look quite close, and I ran quite a bit. <laughs> so you can have a bit of fun as well, you know. We've got to find, we also play cricket there as well, uh, with snowballs, we to find. So, uh, that's where we got uh, stuff as well. Let me take you to the place where uh, we camped here, did some more measurements there. We took some ice samples from here as well. That's the wind on that place where we camped. Um, <laughs> Roaming there. And look at the wind on the outside. And we have to dig our sleds every day. So every day you wake up, dig your sled out of the snow. Very, very cold. Not a very good weather to go to the toilet, I'd say. in Antarctica, what do we reckon? You know, a bit of fact. What do we reckon? A, B, C, D, or E? Who was